Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in to another video. Um, I want to preface by saying this is just my opinion. You know, I've bought a military Humvee before. I experienced it, and then I sold it. And now I'm going to buy another one. Um, I love them. I, I love the novelty of them. I think they're fun to off-road. Um, you know, I like the platform. But I am not stupid enough to, you know, be unable to admit that it doesn't come with its faults. So don't take my opinion as gospel. Ultimately, you know, buy one for whatever reason you want. I'm just a guy on YouTube. Um, I never have claimed to be the expert with these Humvees. Um, I don't want to be the expert. That's not my life goal. Uh, trust me. But, um, you know, I've been around the block uh, a time on this and I kind of know, you know, what you might experience getting into it for the first time. Please do not get offended. One bad reason to get a Humvee, in my opinion, is to use it as a prepper, survivalist, disaster type vehicle. First and foremost, these vehicles are not very reliable. Anything that ever broke in my Humvee, I was able to fix, but that was because I was able to get parts. Uh, you know, in a sort of apocalyptic situation, you're probably not going to be able to get on eBay and order lift pumps and, you know, half shafts and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but they are designed really to have an entire brigade of mechanics and, you know, parts trucks and all of that following them around, fixing them or being, you know, at a military base. They're not really designed like your average civilian vehicle where it's, you know, gets sold and ideally you don't have any problems for 200,000 miles. That was not as big of a concern in the uh, quality control. So you're going to have little things fail all the time, like gauges and lights and electronics. That's pretty common. Um, but you also might have bigger things that will keep you from being able to use the vehicle at all. For instance, uh, when I owned mine, I think I went through two or three sets of glow plugs. Um, I went through a start box. Um, those were the two main problems I experienced. And both those things would have kept me from starting the truck or made it very difficult to start the truck. Um, potentially I could have remedied it by hacking up some wires and hot wiring some things, sure. But, you know, in a pinch, it would have been a bad deal to go to start my truck in the apocalyptic situation or whatever, a meteor storm or nuclear bomb or, <laughs> you know, invasion, and it doesn't start because my start box is fried, you know? Um, that's not a good thing. I also had a, a lift pump go bad. I had to change that. Um... And I'm trying to think if there was anything else. I think those were all the main issues I had. So um, once again, I'm probably not going to be able to find, um, you know, a lift pump. Um, maybe I could steal one out of another 6.5 on the side of the road, whatever. But, you know, even in my Camaro, I've never really had any issues in my 2011 Camaro, right? So if you want to go by this logic, well, at least my Camaro would have kept me going down the road. It doesn't seem like a prepper vehicle. Um, but the best prepper vehicle is the one you can actually use after a year or two and not the one that's broken and sitting on the side of the road or in your garage, right? Um, so I would never rely on a Humvee as a prepper type vehicle. Um, you know, if you're doing it for fun, kind of a LARPing thing, I totally get it. Like, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it certainly looks the part, right? But um, for that reason alone, it's a terrible prepper vehicle. And then the other part is they are not very secure. Um, you know, basically the entire body is paper thin aluminum. Even a 22 will pierce a Humvee like a hot knife through butter. Um, I know you can up armor them and all of that, but typically, you know, the ones you're going to be buying, the ones most people are going to have, are just going to be a normal non up armored Humvee. So um, do not count on it being bulletproof or protecting you from bad guys. Um, you know, you would be much better off in a Prius, to be honest, because at least then you've got some steel and airbags and electronics and insulation, you know, it might stop a 22 or a 380 or something. Um, a Humvee, you have zero chance of that happening unless you have an armored version, which is very, very expensive and hard to, well, almost, I think impossible to get unless you buy aftermarket. You can't buy up armored Humvees from Dove Planet. All right, this next reason is actually <laughs> part of the reason I bought my Humvee and uh, I was just naive. Um, and that is to use one as sort of an overlanding cross-country platform. Now, don't get me wrong, you can do it. Um, I'm still going to probably try and do it on the new one and just face the consequences when they inevitably happen. But it's 
not a good idea. You're very likely to break down. And not only are you likely to break down, but you're also very likely to not be able to find the part you need when you break down because there's not exactly Humvee stores everywhere. Um, you know, more than likely you're gonna have to order it. It's gonna take a lot of time. Yes, they share some parts with uh, GM vehicles, but even then they're older GM vehicles and those parts are hard to find as well sometimes. So, you know, not that you can't do it. Um, I actually had kind of a pissed off commenter say, you know, you can get the stuff shipped to you next day. And it's like, that's just not been the case. And that's a, that's a straight up lie. Um, it takes a long time, week or two for a lot of these parts sometimes. Minimum, you know, four to five days usually. Um, they, for the most part, don't have Humvee parts available on Amazon and stuff like that. The second part is they're not very comfortable. Now, this is where a lot of, I think, um, old men usually like to jump in and comment how I'm um, such a wuss because I want to be comfortable or um, I should just get a Cadillac Escalade or whatever. You know, that whole thing, that argument's kind of boring to me. Um, you know, people like to be comfortable when they're driving eight hours. Um, you know, typically the generation that, <laughs> that likes to criticize me seems to complain the most about uncomfortable things. It seems to me. It's a extremely loud vehicle. You know, for the most part, you're not going to have air conditioning. Uh, yes, there are models with air conditioning. And yes, you can add air conditioning. Most people that I know who have Humvees don't have air conditioning. You know, it, it's... Uh, extremely limited in top speed. Um, if you have an M1123, 65 is about what you'll be able to cruise at. Um, if you have an M998, you're more like 55 because you don't have overdrive. And then if you have one of the turbo diesel trucks, I don't really know. I've never driven one of those. I assume they can probably do more like 70 to 75. Top speed is is severely lacking compared to your average car. And then the other thing is you don't have cruise control. Um, there are certain other ways you can sort of do a fake cruise control that I don't recommend and I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna talk about because I'm worried <laughs> I'll get somebody hurt. Um, but you, for the most part, are not going to have cruise control. Um, the other thing is, you know, unless you have, I think, an authentic set of X doors or a pretty expensive aftermarket door, you know, set or something like that. Uh, most of the time, the doors don't lock from the inside, if they lock at all. Um, so, you know, you've got that to worry about. Um, when I'm traveling and in strange places, I usually like to be secure. Um, at a minimum, have my doors locked, you know, so no one can just rip open my door and uh, try and do me harm. Um, you can't do that with the Humvee, and you're going to be drawing a ton of attention to yourself to begin with because you're in a military vehicle, and it's cool, and it's loud, and um, people are probably going to assume you have money if you can afford a toy like that. So, you know, just keep that in mind. There are a multitude of other reasons why they're not the best travel vehicles. Um, one that jumps to mind immediately is you are going to have like a five or six digit VIN on your title. Um, so if you get pulled over for whatever reason, um, depending on what cop you, you know, get at that time, he might be very uncool with the weird VIN. He might not trust it. Um, I've been pulled over in a Humvee once, and I'll just say a second cop car pulled up, and it took about a half hour for them to validate that what I had was legit. And I was literally right outside my house, basically, uh, right outside my neighborhood, but it was still a nerve-wracking experience. I didn't know if it was going to get impounded. You know, I didn't know what it was, and um, I trust me, I don't have any issue with cops. I, I love cops. I know many of them. Um, but... I, I didn't know what they were going to do. Um, the first guy seemed to be really confused about it and kind of have take a little bit of issue with, you know, the fact that it was uh, a short VIN and um, it was hard to look up information on the vehicle. And the second guy was a little more accepting of it. So um, while that is a bit of a annoyance when you're very close to your house, when you're 10 hours from home um, and it's, you know, 1 a.m. and you're just trying to finish your road trip, it's going to be a lot more unfun. So um, that's just, you know, one more thing that you want to keep in mind. So uh, this is a kind of unique one, I suppose, but I see it a lot from my biggest haters. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a strange thing, but uh, in the same way, a lot of guys will get a sports car because they think it's going to help them get girls. Um, I think a lot of dudes get Humvees because they think it's going to make them look more masculine or more man manly or, um, you know, 
make people think that they are Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that. Except unlike Arnold, they're usually not um, giant hulking figures, um, you know, that are lean, shredded beasts um, that go to the gym regularly and can bench press, you know, twice their body weight. Um, which, in my opinion, that type of thing is the only thing that really is going to make you look more masculine to other people and make your peers more impressed by you. I don't think that's the reason you should go to the gym, but um, really that's the only thing that's going to make you look tougher, not driving a military vehicle. Trust me. Um, you know, I think the military vehicle thing is more a goofy uncle kind of concept. Um, it's cool to have, but most people do not automatically see a guy in a Humvee and think that, wow, he must be a badass. Um, quite often they have the opposite sort of reaction. You know, what is he compensating for? Why does he drive that thing around? Now, you shouldn't let other people's judgment uh, dissuade you from buying one. Um, I'm just going to warn you, that's usually the first impression everyone's going to get of you. Kind of like if you drive a giant lifted truck. You know, why did he feel the need to buy that? Um, you know, of course, I think for most people, it's just a fun thing. Uh, but please don't get one of these things expecting anyone to think you are more manly. Um, it's just not going to happen. Most people kind of laugh at you and think you're a little bit goofy and make a couple jokes about the gas mileage, you know, whatever it might be. Um, I get tons of comments. Uh, I got tons of comments after I sold the Humvee of these dudes who, um, I can only imagine just wear camo every day and say things like, well, I would have served, but... And it's typically along the lines of, well, you know, something about my millennial soft generation or something about I wasn't cut out for one or blah, 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 blah. And it's worth a good laugh. And, you know, sometimes it kind of motivates me to actually go to the gym more often and work out and get much stronger than they will ever be. Um, but it's uh, it's not the reason you should ever buy a military vehicle. And for that matter, others' perception, in my opinion, isn't the reason you should buy any vehicle. Um, often what other people think of you is completely irrelevant to your life and uh, it's going to be almost the opposite of what you were going for. Now last but not least, I think um, a reason you probably shouldn't look into buying a military Humvee is because you think that it's going to go up in value. The year is 2022 and you know we're just coming out of 2021 and everything is going up in value. You could buy a brand new F-150 and it would go up in value. So I don't think what we're seeing right now is really indicative of what's going to happen over a long period of time. Now sure, if you wait 50 years or something like that, almost undoubtedly Humvees are going to be worth a lot of money someday. Um, kind of like the original uh, Willys Jeeps and stuff like that. If you have one of those, it's worth a ton. Um, but you got to be in it for the long game. The market is being flooded with tons of these Humvees. There are entire companies dedicated to reselling them and going through them and that kind of stuff. So there's be, there's more of them uh, available every day, not less, at least for the time being. All right, guys, that's really all I got. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to make a um, positive video. You know, the reasons you should buy a surplus Humvee, because I think that'll be interesting as well. Like I said, I'm still trying to get another one, man. I'm still working on it. I'm sorry all my videos are just me talking. Um, I kind of hate that. But there's only so much I can do right now. And people seem to really like these videos. They have almost 100% like to dislike ratio. So, um, and a lot of views. So, you know, if that's happening, I'm not going to stop unless everyone starts saying, you know, I'm tired of you just talking, Kevin. Stop doing this, you know. Then I'll, I'll take your advice and, and slow down a little bit on these. But I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if not, please let me know. I hope you can like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much, as always, for your support. 10K subscribers very soon, baby. It's going good. So I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.